Looking to maximize resin and terpene production? Today, we're diving into the stress techniques to bring out the best in your bud. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A. Plus, see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. Come on, High C, let's do it, man. Let's get these buds frosty. Okay, so you said stress. Yes. And I automatically think of stress as a bad thing because when I get stressed out, I usually get sick. I don't perform well. You're saying that there's positive stressors? Yeah, you ever known someone that's never had a stress in their life? How do they handle it? Oh, they break. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So there's... This is a, a living plant. There's going to be things that are go less than perfect. Uh, so some of those stresses are damaging. And then some of them just elicit a response that say, hey, build back stronger. Okay. So first thing I think about is in nature, there's definitely going to be stressors and the plants get stronger for it. Yeah. And then I'm thinking like weight training. That is a stress that yes. maybe makes you stronger. You are breaking that muscle down so it comes back stronger, right? Okay. So let's jump into it and let's kind of piggyback off of that with what I think is the scariest one of the list. Yeah. High stress training or super cropping. Okay, explain and, that. And there's a reason why they call it high stress training. You are literally breaking the branch, or if you're not breaking the branch, you are breaking the inside. They call it the cambrium layer. It's like inside the bark. Mm -hmm. But that's that highway where the xylem and the phloem and all the nutrients are flowing. So it's really interesting because they tell you the super cropping, you can literally take a branch in your hand and snap it. Mm -hmm. You can either snap it like 90 degrees. You can go and twist it a little bit till you hear a little popping, which is the cambrium layer snapping. And the idea behind this is that it is eliciting a stress response. It's saying, hey, I broke here. Um, I need repair. You send some hormones up, send all the energy up you can to repair this. And what happens is it ends up being a stronger joint than what it was before. You may see, you talked about in nature, you never seen like a tree branch or something that falls halfway over mm -hmm. and then it gets this, you know, it, it survives and then a bunch of different foliage starts coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hormonal. The plant wants to survive. So it sends those, those uh, hormones up, the healing hormones. Those are their auxins and cytokin and all this cra all the, the stuff that's in the uh, textbooks mm -hmm. that I kind of just go like that over. But it, they're hormones. Yeah. So those hormones that produce growth, normally they would be chilling out maybe down in the root system or something but they notice hey something broke here sure and so they s start pumping it to that area absolutely yep and that's high stress training right there super cropping they'll call it okay. question that i have about that yeah should i only be doing i know there's certain things that we only do in veg and we only do in bloom yeah and i'm kind of scared that. I wouldn't do it in bloom. Okay. In bloom, I want those hormones already redistributed. I want that. I want that uh, wound healed already, okay. and just throwing out veg vegetative growth stronger than ever. Yeah, so, so super I would cropping it. only in veg. I yes, Scotty will say that too. Okay, so that's high stress training, mm -hmm. but there's also low stress training. What's, yes, what's that? Low stress training is just uh, spreading the plant out so that it gets a lot of, uh, uh, redistributes the energy, uh, not just to those top buds. Uh, normally, if you just have a plant, you don't train it or anything like that, uh, it'll just grow a big top bud. Mm -hmm. You know, So by low stress training, we can take that giant top cola and bend it to the side. You'd be surprised how you know bendable these and malleable these things are. So yeah, bend it to the side. And what's that doing? It's let the four or five other smaller uh, colas develop. And so it just by, you know, the plant is going to send all its hormones, all its growth and energy up to that top point. Mm -hmm. So if you can lower that top point or make multiple tops and redistribute that energy, you end up getting a bunch of good buds instead of just one big one. So naturally, if you just let it go by itself in the center, usually yeah. it's going to shoot up and that's where it's going to get the most light. So that's where it's going to send the most 
of the nutrients and stuff. Yep. Do you cut that off? You know, for me, I don't. I'll low stress train it over. I'll bend it over to the side. And sometimes I will use high stress training. I'll use super cropping where I'll just take that top and vegetative, bend it over, and then that's going to redistribute. So now they call it the apical Murray stem. The apex is the top of the plant. So mm -hmm. it's going to, you know, it's sending those hormones and all that, that food uh, up to the top of the plant. Once it can't go anywhere else, what's it do? It accumulates there. That's why the tops are bigger. So making it so there's not one clear top there's one not and they call it apical dominance mm -hmm. there's a bunch there's five or six or seven very similar you know similar tops that's where you're going to get much better yield you're going to get much better distribution of nutrients there and you're going to get a bunch of really good buds as opposed to having one bud and then a bunch of little tiny ones at the bottom they got ripped off for all their newts and is this where like scrog nets or yep. using uh you i see you have bamboo stakes and exactly. you kind of pull your plants towards the bamboo stakes that's exactly. what you're doing yep yep i'm redistributing the energy and then i'm allowing that light energy which is what respond was responsible for uh photosynthesizing i'm allowing that to hit the plants and and for that to really get absorbed as opposed to that one central bud blocking everything out Gotcha. Since we're talking about light, let's yeah. specifically talk about light stressors and how you can use different spectrums of the light to cause different effects in your plant. Sure. Uh, start out on the low end with UV. We see uh, UV stresses our skin. You go into the tanning bed. What is the tan is a stress response from the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, you get UVA and UVB when you lay in one of those tanning beds. And very quickly, you don't have to be out there for days, man. With what, within 30 minutes? You got a stress response, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that to plants as well. Don't forget those uh, trichomes are a stress response to keep the plant healthy. Keep the plant, you know, the actual foliage, the leaf healthy. Uh, so it's making these trichomes to block some of that damaging, really powerful UV light. We talk about UV light being just a really tight wavelength. It's, it penetrates, man. It's, it's powerful. So that's what these trichomes are doing. They're trying to keep it from damaging, uh, uh, damaging the plant material. So UVA and UVB, are those usually inside of like the full spectrum LED lights? Or no. is this a separate light that that you get separate these don't have anything to do most of the lights that you, you know the lights that are focused on photosynthesis driving exciting that chloroplast and getting it to produce energy uv is about the plant response it's about getting those trichomes to protect the plant it's saying the plant saying i don't know this isn't helping me grow this is just damaging me you know so let's get as much as many trichomes as we can to protect me so i can still photosynthesize Okay, so you buy like a secondary light for your grow? Yeah, you'd have to buy. And they're kind of on the newer end as well. There's UVA that they've had out for a little bit. As you go up the, up the alphabet, UVA is uh, mo the safest wavelength they have of UV. Mm -hmm. And it goes down to UVB, which is can damage you, can definitely damage your skin. And then UVC is that causes skin cancer and whatnot. So... Uh, so yeah. Don't be working under that then. No, they use the UVC. I call it A is all right. I think you can work under that for a little bit. They have some UV and lights. Um, B is burn. I don't give you a burn. I don't like to work under that. And then C, I, ca I call it the cancer light. I don't work under the, under the UVC. Okay. But some people do use a little bit of UVC. Am They're, I wrong? The, everybody's experimenting with stuff now. This is all you know being reinvented or invented as we speak. So mm -hmm. yeah, I have I seen most of the lights that are out there are uva some of them have a little bit of uvb and then there's one guy shout out to my buddy jaron who is experimenting with uvc and i'm not vouching for it yet well and he says he doesn't work under it and he only leaves it on for a couple of minutes a day that's the thing just like with the suntan light you know you're going in there for what 15 or 20 minutes at a time uh, these UV lights, the A, you can leave on as they go, you know, more powerful. So the A, they leave on for a bit. I want to say the B, I've heard of people leaving on for like 15 or 20 minutes just to elicit that stress response. We're mm -hmm. not trying to just grow with it and elicit photosynthesis. We're just trying to freak it out so it sends a signal to make more trichomes. And then B... Or no, C, just like five minutes, less than five minutes. That's what they're saying. But you haven't even messed with it. I have not. All I know about UVC is that it's the clean lights that they tell you will kill anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm freaked out about it. I'll wait for my 
my buddies to carefully do some research. I trust people that are more careful than me to do that research. I am playing around. I ordered some UVB bulbs, though, uh -huh. 310 nanometer, and I'm going to use them 5, 10 minutes at a time during the day. I'm going to see what happens. And then this one's controversial because I've heard 100% one way and 100% the other way. Yeah, I want to just bring to get this one out there i really want the crew's opinion on this i don't play with either of these because i have a perpetual harvest so i i don't have the opportunity to but the first one is the 72 hour dark period and this, that's right before you're cutting your plants right down. before you harvest you turn the lights off for 72 hours and the idea is that it gets the gives the plants the signal that they are getting ready to get harvested so the idea is they're supposed to push out that last little Little bit of terpenes and cannabinoids because they understand that they're that they are going to be harvested and isn't also kind of the theory that during the dark period in that last couple of days less volatization um i mean that is something yeah if you think about it terpenes volatize off with heat Mm -hmm. So I don't, yeah, I mean, this one's got me, I've got my head scratch and I've got a bunch of questions for this because the, the, you have heat in the grow room anyway. So I'm not sure why the last three days you treat them any different. I think it's more of a ripening response they're going for. Okay. So 72 hours of, of darkness dark, yeah. is supposed to help ripen them up supposed to finish them up you know sometimes your plants they're they just don't look done mm -hmm. you know supposedly the 72 hour dark period is a trick to that so that makes sense to me because when i buy bananas that aren't ripe enough mm -hmm. yet i put them in a paper bag yep. and i leave them in there for a day or two and they usually ripen right up but then i've heard the opposite instead of 72 hours of dark i've heard leaving the lights on for the last couple of days this one i it makes a little bit more sense to it but a stress response, trichomes are that stress response. So if I have three days, what is three days out of 60 days? Mm -hmm. Is that 5%? I don't don't make me do the math. <laughs> if I can get, uh, and by the way, if I'm doing that for 24 hours a day now, now I'm getting even more light on them. Instead of 12 hours a day of light, I've got 24 hours a day of light. It's so like that's six days that's of like light. Six days in of, three days. Yeah. So if you think about it, those trichomes are there as a stress response. Uh, if we're stressing them out unusually the, when they're just the last little bit of trichome production the idea is that maybe they will push that out that last little bit of energy they have because the plants are dying when they're, they're the trichomes are they're trying to attract pollen they're trying to make themselves as sticky as possible to attract some pollen so that they can make a seed and and you know extend their life so what automatically scares me about that is tricking the plant back into veg is that not something you have to worry about not enough time to do it there's not enough time to do that it takes at least a solid week to for your plants to understand that to go back in the veg more like okay. 10 days so there's definitely not enough time to do that uh the terpenes do volatize you know if terpenes are volatizing off though within heat that would be the only other thing that, you know, the only con, but mm -mm, I don't think so. So now I'm asking you, have you done any of these tricks? Have you done 72 on or 72 hours off? I would love to know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, share this video with another grower you know, and check out the other couple of videos YouTube is recommending. I think you will dig them.